get that. Actually, that's going on my to-do list. There you go, buddy. Hey, Siri, add that to my to-do list. Did you get all that? Oh, shh. It's still an airport. find a to-do list. Do you want to create one? All right, whatever, ho. <laughs> the stronger the grass, the greater the distortion of perception and judgment. I'm from Oregon. I drink my coffee, smoke my reefer in the morning. I roll two J's up. Brand boy, welcome back to the Hippie Speedball Podcast, my friend. Cheers, good brother. Dude, so good to fucking see you. How you been, bud? Oh, every day's a holiday for me, man. Moving and grooving, making new fans. That's why I like hanging out with you, man. Like it's, it's, I'm really excited to have you back on the show because the last time we were on the podcast, man, we had such a great time. That was such a good conversation, bro. We did, we did. And, and I gotta, I gotta just start off by saying thank you for giving my first ever radio appearance. Oh yeah. I've never been on the radio, bro. That was dope, man. We always played the whole episode. Dude, that was so cool. Like that was so cool to fucking and then what you did yeah. with the music coming in and out and yeah, shit. Yeah. Bro, nice fucking work. I haven't been able to see you in person to be able to actually thank you for that because that shit meant a lot to me. Right. It got on, me bro. so excited to sit there in the car and tune into the radio and hear my own show playing. I was like, get the fuck out of here. That's wild, <laughs> like bro. such a huge fucking honor, man. That really meant a lot to me. For sure, man. Yeah, we should do it live sometime, too. Like, have you come in and be my co-host for, like, half the show? Bro, I would love that. Yeah. We would have such a fun time. Yeah, we should do that, man. <laughs> we got, I got a show coming uh, this Saturday, actually, if you want to come through. This Saturday? What time? Yep. Uh, 10 to midnight. Yeah, will that's be, right, 10 to midnight, yeah. Yep. K-Boo, you know? If not, we'll do it the next month, but we got... We should totally do that. Honestly, that, I want to make that shit happen. Why not, bro? I got, yeah. artists, I got two artists coming in that night. So Who's coming get, in? Uh, Swami. Okay. Who I've made uh, an EP with called Kami Vibes. And right now, me and him are working on Kami Vibes too. Kami Vibes? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, he's a Dragon Ball Z fanatic. And, nice. And he's a nice. He's, a, he's the producer, so he made all the beats. Okay. And then he... That's sick. And then me and him, like, trade verses back and forth. And so we're doing that again this time. Last project was five tracks. This one's going to be six or seven. Nice. And we're just going it, to, it's, it's vibey, bro. It's so much different than my like bar for bar delivery style that I do myself. Hell yeah. It's like just hell of vibes. Sick. Who else is going to be in there? You said you had two people coming uh, in? An artist named Tuan. He's really, Tuan. yeah, Tuan is sick. I swear if you play a, if you walk in the studio and you just hear somebody rapping and, but you can't see their face, you'd be like, Whoa, is that Kendrick Lamar in the in the booth right now? He sounds just like Kendrick Lamar, almost like you can't even tell the difference sometimes. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. He's just got this really cool, like he's like blah, blah, blah. you know, just it's like it's smooth, it's quiet, but That's it's got sick. Yeah, it's it's silky. Dude, I, I honestly that sounds like a lot of fun. So it'd be yeah, from the Saturday from the day that we're recording this podcast, because this one will come out next week. But it's yeah, that sounds fucking sick. Yeah, come I would through, love man. That, bro. Get to meet some new artists. Yeah, have because, them on your podcast, you know. Yeah, and then let's just at that point, my lady is going to be home. My kid will be asleep. My odds are, my lady will be asleep anyway. So Word. fuck yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Let's bro. do it. Like yeah, let's fucking do it. Locked Thanks a in, lot, bro. man. So let's let the people know what the fuck you've been up to, man. Because you've been fucking, you've been busy too. You've been fucking doing your thing. You got lots of big moves coming. What's been going on in Bren Boy's world, bro? A a lot of. A lot of love and light and awesomeness. That's all I'm paying attention to. Love, light, good, that goody good, that ooh, wee, ye feeling. Nice. You know, everything that... <laughs> I love it. You know, I'm just all about that. So anything that umbrellas underneath that, that's what I've been up to. Well, damn. It includes this right here. Boom. I just released Blueberry Pancakes. Um, last time I was on your podcast, I had the joint, yep. right? Yeah. So kind of do a little sidebar talk to while me I, so that joint uh got me a uh, complaint from my neighbors from my office that day <laughs> <laughs> yeah nice work, bro my that's the accolades i was looking for bro. Bro, bro i literally got a notice on my door a few days later about that specific day and i was thinking i don't even know if i was oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. like that was one of the times it, it sucks because after that i actually stopped smoking in my house because i got two complaints that straight up were me and then they tried to hit me with more and Damn. i was like no -uh, motherfucker this whole apartment complex smells like weed homie Come on now. that's when i started going to the social club a lot more but but anyway, yeah, dude. That's so you awesome. had the joints last time. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's so good to hear, man. That uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a new type 
type of noise complaint. Like it's loud up in this bitch, bro. You know, I know but you're, you're, you're forever. Shit, you're right? literally you're that day is literally ingrained in the records on my rent history. <laughs> <laughs> in the books, bro. I made history. <laughs> I made the history books with that shit. So this is the coolest thing. Is like I was pushing that heavy back then, right? Like at the shows at the at the cannabis club you know mm -hmm. i would be handing them out i'd be passing passing joints you know just getting my name out there because it had a the a qr code on the packaging of those joints those pre-rolls it, it went straight to my music so mm -hmm. i kept like showing it off on the on my podcast you know in different videos i kept promoting this blueberry pancakes and this company natural roots uh they're based out of hillsborough they're an extracts company super legit bro this is all cured resin nice. so the way they process it is like there's like five stages just to make it like the purest product okay so i really mess with the the company like they're just already doing their thing so do they like turn the resin into a hash and then extract it from there you know what it's some science yeah shit. like I i'll show you the video but i took a video of each stage nice that they did oh fuck yeah that's and, dope oh yeah it, and i Hell just yeah. put like three seconds on each <laughs> stage you know what i'm saying and it and i'm like oh man it looks like you know a science experiment you that's, know that's crazy and so um they saw now the, it's got your name on there bro yeah yeah they saw the branding that i was doing with blueberry pancakes nice. and and how it related to my song and everything and so we partnered together to come up with this collab product and these are pods disposable pods and that's fucking dope man so yeah and um and the coolest thing about these pods is they're rechargeable mm -hmm. so yeah there's like you know you get like even like uh like the jewel pens you know that people be smoking if they're disposable ones if they have like half juice left but the battery's dead you're fucked you gotta yeah. toss out yeah but these ones you can actually recharge them uh so it's a gram of cured resin blueberry muffins times um vanilla frosting nice. to make that sweet you want to give it a shot? Absolutely, bro. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, them blueberry pancakes. Wrap this up tight with a little bit of syrup on the side. Very good. Very good, bro. I, I yeah, that I remember like uh in the last time in the podcast when you said that line, like and you like blueberry syrup on the side. And yeah. you pulled the fucking joint out. And I was looking like, oh wow, that was cool. Oh, <laughs> and then, it really is on the side. He was fucking kidding. tasty as fuck, bro. Yeah, the Terps, man. Shout out to Terp Logic too. They're the this the I technology. Know, I, I know Terp yeah, I know about Terp you know Logic. About Terp Logic. Mm hmm so mm. i really oh, that's really fucking good bro. i'm so excited about this product so my home so awesome you have yeah go ahead oh i was gonna say my hometown like pretty much <laughs> bought the bulk of the first batch that's sick bro. they were like how many's left okay we'll take them all that's <laughs> fucking dope <laughs> and it was one dispensary so shout out to redwood cannabis over there on f street in grants pass uh they they seen that they're coming out and they're like yeah and so i go to gp and people are snapping me videos of this like we got your product brand boy oh my gosh you know that's fucking so cool bro and i go in there to buy i was like that's hey sick. let me get i would like one of those and they're like wait you're brand boy what the fuck well it's a really smart you know? approach dude like it's a really smart idea to actually go out and have a product like i was telling you before we started recording uh we were blazing up that nice fat blunt and fucking getting super ripped we were um i was telling you that i want to get a product out there too man because that, that's that's such a fucking good idea because also it's creating some income for what you do and then it's also attached to your music which grows the music and the station and stuff like that like yeah yeah fucking a bro how did you even like uh so they approached you about it yeah they approached me on instagram because they just seen that i was you know doing a lot of uh promotion for this and they were looking for an influencer um and they just happen to be fans of hip hop. They're from nice. the East Coast, from Jersey. Nice. So I got to meet the head of marketing, the CEO and owner, you know, just really cool people. That's so, so fucking dope, yeah. bro. Yeah. Shout Congratulations, out. Thank man. You, man. That is so fucking cool. Yeah. Shout out to Natural Roots, Joe, Gray, all the, hey, the good Joe. folks out there. Shout out, Another Joe. Another Joe. Yep. 
They're good people, man. Like There's I lots just, of us out there these days. Yeah, well, I mean, these Joes, man, are coming out of the woodwork, man. <laughs> you know? Just killing shit. Well, it's because we're, you know, with a, such a simple name like Joe. Yeah. Like, you know, like, it's one of those names. Simple it's, name, he said. It is. Like, it sucks. Every Joe that is listening totally understands exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, they, You're they, all simple. <laughs> like, no, our names are simple. It's because, like, it's easy to remember, but it's also really easy to forget. Oh, like, yeah. and it almost sounds. Oh, I see what you're and saying. And it almost yeah. sounds made up. And there's a million things that rhyme with it. So, like, you can't yeah. rhyme anything with Joe that that Joe hasn't heard before. That's true. Because we deal with it from grade school. Yeah. <laughs> like, we hear from, it from day one. Oh. And it's like, it's, it's fucking, you know, it's one of those names. But there's a lot of us out there right now. Yeah. And yeah, but kudos to the fucking you, bro, for getting that shit going. I'm super proud of you. Super happy for you, yeah. bud. Thank you, brother. I'm su- I'm super excited about it. It's a big win for my whole hometown because, you know, Grant's Pass, as I discovered when I went down there for my birthday just uh, last weekend, I spent... Oh, happy late birthday, thank bro. Thank you, bro. I spent like five and a half days down there, and I just got so much love for my hometown, and I get caught up in the city sometimes up here. Mm-hmm. You know, I live in North Portland, and like just kind of moving around in that area, and like it's Good just bro. faster, you know? <coughs> There's more noise. You know, I go down mm-hmm. there to Southern Oregon and like I'm talking more noise, like literally and metaphorically. Yeah, speaking, for you know? sure. There's just more noise going on. And for down sure. there, you know, I was like, OK, I'm hearing crickets, you know, at nighttime, you nice, know, like though. it's nice and peaceful. But then when I go out to the bars and party and stuff, it's like the whole city is like one big college campus. Oh, is yeah. what Grants Pass feels like. Okay. And you go to like these, you go to different bars and it's just like going to a different frat party or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Back you know? in like the old house party days yeah, house where you, parties. you have like your entire group of people go from one party to another party. And then yes. that group merges to another party. That was my favorite kind of like the best house party. I loved those nights. High bro. school, bro. Tw- you know, 1920, right out of, right out of high school. Like. Those were the best house Dude, parties, bro. Right? I like those better than going to the bars. Oh, hundred like, percent. Me I'll too. Take one of those over Dude, that any me day. Me too. But and I, uh, one of the craziest ones that I ever was at. It was my homegirl's birthday. Actually, funny enough, it was my homegirl Patience. I've had her on the podcast fucking twice, mm. and uh, she's she's amazing. Patience Kaufman. She owns uh, Bite Me Cookies and Treats. Like she had really really dope ass cake decorating. Yeah, isn't that a dope name? <laughs> Bite mm. Me Cookies and Treats. I love it. Dude, fucking so sick. But it was t-shirt. her. It was her birthday party. And we were all partying at like their apartment. And then we all decided to go to this other one, which already had like fucking like, like 60, 70 people there. And so like, next thing you know, there's like this just gigantic group. And then more people started merging and more people started merging to this fucking big ass house that we were at. Yeah. And then a fucking fight broke out outside. And then fucking apparently one of the dudes had a gun. So everybody fucking started scattering. And I just went in and grabbed my jacket because I heard the word gun. I'm like, all right, I'm out. So I went inside, grabbed my jacket. And then as I'm leaving, it's just fucking chaos outside. Everybody's running around. I don't know what exactly happened. And I just hear my friends go, Joe, get in the fucking car. (laughs) And I was like, (laughs) okay. And I just go just get in my homie's car. I didn't even really know who was yelling it to me, but I knew it was a familiar voice and they were trying to get me over this way. So I just ran this way, looked. I was like, okay, cool. And then they fucking already had the door open for me, hopped in the car. We fucking bolted out of there and then they kind of were breaking down what was going on outside apparently like the guy tried to break up a fight and then he was like oh shit that dude's got a gun and then someone fucking freaked out he pulled it out and it was like fucking all craziness literally from the time that i heard the word gun to the time i was back at my house was maybe like five minutes like that's how fast it It all all fucking happened and i remember getting home sitting on my table like what the fuck just happened? Like those are the house party days that I miss. That make you ask that question. <laughs> those are the house party days. Like well, I bet it was a popping ass party too before it that. It really happened. was, bro. And that's it was fucking great. Everybody was having a great time and just tell like, you know, two assholes had to fucking ruin it for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's always the alcohol. Yeah, no, yeah, and it's always people that can't handle their alcohol. Yeah. Like there's a lot of that, but I'm actually throwing a fucking Halloween party here. You're more than welcome to swing by if you'd like, bro. Yeah. Oh, dope. Yeah, I'm gonna have a bunch of people from the social club and a bunch of other people around, so it's gonna sick. be fucking sick. And I wanna, I'm gonna be buying a fuckload of booze, so I'm literally gonna have like a full bar. So if you want to make yourself a fucking cocktail, have beer, whatever people like to drink and shit. Do and you already have lots your, of weed. Do you already have your costume picked out? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, uh, me and my lady are gonna go as Ellie and Carl from Up. Oh, okay. That's yeah. <laughs> Isn't that That's a cool creative, idea? Man. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen that. Yeah, we we uh we looked it up. There's been people that have done it before and um uh, we uh we've done some really sick cosplays in our relationship. The first year we were together, we went to two different parties and one of them we dressed up as uh Morticia and Gomez. 
and then another, Adam's family? Yeah, from Adam's family. And then also that one was uh, whenever I took Juniper trick-or-treating because I made her a little Wednesday costume. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah that, and that so, cute, and, huh? yeah. That's and then we pick. went to another party and we were, you remember the show Recess? Fuck yeah. We were TJ and Spinelli. Love it, bro. Dude. That's and that a one, good one. That one won us TJ a costume contest. He's everyone's best friend. Dude, I've done I've done a few 90s uh, cartoon cosplays because one year I went to a Halloween party and I also won a costume contest because I dressed up as a, the theme was superheroes and I went as Quail Man from Doug. Oh, that's awesome. Bro, and it was sick. Chickapot, chickapot, chickapot. Yeah. do 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 this the episode that I, that like after because it'll come out before this, but on the episode I did with Promise, mm. uh, she actually asked me, so she made a beat to to rap to on the episode. Dude, Promise from the is that where you Love. met her? Was that the Rip City Basement Showcase? Uh, no, it was. Um, so I met her actually at an open mic. Oh wow! Yeah, she came to an open She's mic. Sick, bro. Dude, I just, love her. Her energy. And, mm-hmm. you know, it pretty much says it all. You know, she's a fucking star. She can rap about anything up there. It's just Once, it's like, her yeah, uh, energy. As she that's... continues to evolve her sound and her flow and her persona, she's a fucking star. Mm-hmm. Like whenever, like, you know, as she's going to continue to evolve it and shit. And like, and also I just, I fuck with her energy in the sense that she's like, she's going like the classic troubadour like kind of route with her music. Like yeah, yeah. I've, she's done open mics, like not even like music ones, just like comedy, all open whatever and then just goes there and just has someone play her beat and fucking spits her songs and i'm like that's fucking <laughs> so cool that's great like that is that's the way you fucking do it like you get used to playing on every single kind of stage on every single kind of avenue whether if it's a fucking coffee shop or the fucking hawthorne theater like you you know mm-hmm. or the rose garden you learn how to play on every single kind of stage and evolve it that way there's not a lot of people that really do that anymore like everybody's just kind of more focused on making like a single and then having it blow up virally instead of trying to actually go around to the live circuits and fucking hit a mo- hit a fucking be on stage every single fucking night, every single night, All find right. a place, find a place to be on stage. I will tell you this because I know a lot of rappers in Portland, mm-hmm. a lot of rappers in Portland. There are a, a lot of showcases that started popping up the past couple years, and now there's so many showcases there might be two important showcases going on on the same night. Nice. And there'll be artists that are at both shows. And then the next month they go do a different so showcase. So there are more artists. Okay, I need to meet these people yes, because that's, so many, that's, bro. That, that's something that I need to, I want to meet these people because that's something I have so much fucking respect for. So this is what I, um, you know, because I work with a lot of artists in town through the radio and, mm-hmm. um, and doing artist campaigns and helping them. Like is, it, when I learn something or do something, on the business side for Bren Boy, mm-hmm. the art, my artist, Bren Boy, you know, I just pass that along and kind of be like, hey, I just learned this and kind of mastered this thing. If you guys are looking for it, I can offer it to you. Nice. And I just keep doing that. And that's what built like the services for Rip City Basement is for artists to mm. get the same things that I'm doing when they're like, man, how did you get that? Well, like, here you go. Boom. Hand off. Yeah. Assist, assist, assist. Absolutely. You know, and so a lot of these artists that are, coming in to do the rip city basement camp which is like the podcast the radio show mix show the uh can online campaigns um the press the media the interview you know um all that stuff and then the showcase you know nice. perform live um the kind of the the strategy when they're trying to break into the portland market is first year you're here do as many showcase if you could be on like you're saying be on stage every single night and just go out there yeah like, like promise is doing for the first run first year every single open mic college dorm room show yeah do that shit and then after that the next year back off a little bit maybe do one showcase a month okay and then as you get a little bit more developed the next sprint maybe one show per quarter this is smart Maybe after that, well, you, that now you sense. have a bigger following. I'm talking one show a year in, per city, maybe two. Oh, okay. You know, because what happens is the as as the production companies that artists start to work with get bigger, mm-hmm. they don't want you playing all these shows. Well, for sure, yeah, definitely it takes away from the ticket sales. They're booking you because you're you've leveled up and you have a following, and they know that you can bring ticket sales to their mm. event. If you have a show the day before, why would they book you? Yeah. Their fans are going to say this. 
Hey, are you gonna go to the? Are you gonna go to her show on Saturday? Oh, no, nah, man, she got a show tonight. I'm just gonna go here. I gotta watch the kids tomorrow. Mm. And then the person who's running the event on Saturday is like, "What the fuck, man?" Yeah, they could have hired the babysitter for Friday and came to my show, but this person had options, so they chose mm-hmm. this one. You know. And so, so they make it a little bit more exclusive as they kind of continue to grow and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you kind of have to. That makes a lot of sense, too, because like the way you described it, how like your first leg, you're on show, like you're on stage every single fucking night. And then you go to like once a month, then you go to like once a quarter. And then like that makes a lot of sense because like if once you like because during that first year, if an artist was like literally an entire year on stage out there spreading their word every single night, mo- Monday through Friday, 365 all year long by the end of that year they would have such a fucking massive following true like massive yeah. and then it could be at a point where they're fucking sound like they're actually being able to put on shows like fucking you know like once a month or like you know then once a quarter and then because then like and then they could you know book a tour and actually mm-hmm. go out in other places and stuff like that and like that's fucking yeah that's a really really good approach and i think that's a good approach with not necessarily just with music but with everything you dedicate an entire year every single day to it you're going to be blown away at what the results are even you can watch videos on youtube of people that'll like oh i posted every single day on youtube shorts for an entire month and this is what happened like Mm -hmm. you know you'll see how much their fucking followings have grown and different stuff literally just by doing that every single day for a month because when you have that intense discipline you become you know a master at it a lot quicker than most other people that would be dedicating maybe like every other day or something like that. If you're like, no, fuck that. This is my job. Like I have my job and this is my nighttime job. And then you just take it like that every single night, you know? And it's like you said on the first episode we did, you know, you're, it's like you're an, um, you're an athlete and your sport just happens to be hip hop. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. uh, About how, Hey, just like we talked about on the last episode, Mm -hmm. you know, you got your neuroreceptors that look like this. And there's that little lightning bolt type of thing that connects them when you make a connection of, oh, hey, I made a YouTube short. Oh, now you got this connection. But as you do it again, like something gets wrapped around these receptors to tighten that connection up. So then it's like, oh, I did another short. Oh, I did another short. Oh, now I did another short. Eventually that connection is so strong. It's like, hey, shorts is what I do, baby. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And and, and in your brain, you're just waking up like, got to make some shorts. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. So, yeah, you know, for it's, sure. It's man. like, it's like, uh, that neuroplasticity, you know, is like, it's so real. Like you mm-hmm. really can train your brain to be like, Hey, this is who we are now. Yeah. You know, we need to, this is what we need to do, mm-hmm. you know? And if it's the YouTube, if you're a podcaster and it's, uh, or a, a content creator with videos and YouTube is the route, well then, yeah. I think shorts, like we were talking about, is yeah. that sounds like the new wave, it, right? Dude, it's going to be. It's like they've actually come out themselves and said this is exactly what's going to start being pushed. Because little, I don't for those that are just listening or watching and don't know what we're talking about, YouTube made an announcement saying that they're going to start using shorts to push long form content. And for guys like us and people with podcasts and, you know, longer form videos, this is great fucking news. So get on them shorts, find clips, Mm -hmm. push them out as shorts. Because like I said, the first one that I posted, I was fucking blown away. I was absolutely blown away. And it was just a funny moment from my first video, from my first episode back on video. Mm. And it was like uh, this moment with me and Sammy V. Shout out Sammy V for this amazing fucking clip. And uh, we, I posted it on um youtube and it was like uh, this part wherever he was saying um, we were talking about silver and how like there's a lot of uses for it like it's increasing in value and stuff like that and i was saying like even for people that are kind of more into like you know like you know like crystals and more like magic and earthly stuff and everything like they're using silver like crazy and then he made a joke and he was like it's the new oat milk of spirituality <laughs> <laughs> and so I put that as a clip and then posted it on YouTube. And then That's like, funny. yeah, within like two hours, it already had like 1400 views and I already had like five, six new subscribers. And I was like, holy fuck. That's tight. And like, and I was like, damn. So if you did that every single day, which is what I'm trying to do, trying to get clips of, you know, all mm-hmm. the different types of be able to use them as a YouTube short, because they're going to start pushing that hard. And I always miss the waves of when they're actually pushing things. And yeah, I see yeah. the people that did like what they were pushing mm-hmm. and they fucking blew up from it. Right. Like whenever Instagram first started pushing reels, right? like, and then people that were really, really diving into it are now have fucking like massive, massive pages. It's like beachfront property. Like the first wave of people coming in, that's uh, taking advantage of it. 
they're buying up that beachfront property, you know? Yeah. And then some people think, oh, man, I'm, I'm too late to the game, you know? And they, and they like, don't even want to dive into it. But that second and third row of beachfront property is still there, you know? Yeah. The social media game is still... Uh, it's still open, you know. Oh, it's, for sure. So that's like and eh, podcasting too. You know, you might not get that front, but that second row is looking pretty nice right now. Yeah, you know? and also you'll be right there on that second row. So whenever that fucking beachfront property does open up, you can just fucking go claim your fucking spot because mm. you're already right there. You're already right there. You're already you know? right there. And, and like, and it's like that with podcasting too. Like, you know, whenever someone wants to start a podcast, I don't think they should be intimidated because yeah, there's four million podcasts, but look at how many YouTube channels there are, and there's still YouTubers that are fucking blowing up creating new channels getting millions and yeah. millions of fucking subscribers and fucking making shit loads of money from their content you know one of my favorite youtube channels that i've watched blow up is uh, you ever watch mr ballin i've never seen it uh, so mr ballin uh, it's like a uh, mr b-a-l-l-e-n it's all like one word but um he is like a former navy seal and all he does is tells like stories of like strange, dark and mysterious stories that are all true from like mm. random stuff. It could be like scary ones or like there was this one wherever a woman started hearing a voice in her head saying that she had something wrong with her brain and to go to these coordinates. And when she finally listened to the voices and went to the coordinates, it was actually like a fucking like a neurological center. And they said, go up on the third floor and see this doctor. And sure as shit, that doctor was there. Whoa. Like, yeah. And she literally heard voices in her head telling her all this shit. And then she found out that she had a tumor in her brain. And she got surgery on it. And whenever she woke up from the surgery, she heard the voices one last time say, we're glad to have assisted you. Goodbye. And then she never heard the voices ever again. Oh, wow, that's a trippy. Dude, yeah. And then he told stories like this and all these really crazy ones. But I've watched his yeah. channel. Like I started following I started uh, following him when he was only at like he was had um, like less than a million. He was at like 800,000 like subscribers or something like that. And now he's at like fucking like 13 million or fucking like 12 million he's yeah. fucking just blown up but he was at right at the perfect time and this is another like thing that we were talking about earlier of how it's not too late because he timed it up perfectly because he was he started posting his content of just literally telling true stories with like you know and he'll show like pictures and play audio clips or 911 calls or like all sorts of shit with it so it kind of adds to the realism and it's not just him talking but he posted it right at the fucking beginning of the pandemic when everybody was just chilling at home on their phones. So he had like the perfect fucking window. So once wow. you find like the, you know, like massive success is just a combination of opportunity and hard work. When those two things line up eventually, that's whenever shit really blows up. Like you have to put in the hard work. So when an opportunity comes, you're already fucking there. Like we said, getting that second row beachfront property. So as soon as that house opens up, you can just go move right in. Yeah, forget about it. Forget about yeah. it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm fucking lit. It's tasty stuff, brother. Lit like Vic. Fucking more lit than a jack o' lantern. What are you gonna That's be for lit. Halloween, bro? I haven't even thought about it, man. I have not given. I'm more of an in the moment. I'm one of those people that thinks about it and then changes my mind in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> like I've done that so many times. Well, just <coughs> randomly in my head, just all of a sudden, I feel like maybe I'll be Michael Jackson this year. I want to get a white glove and a uh, and a red jacket. It'd be amazing. You're going to be Thriller, Michael Jackson? Yeah. Fuck yeah, learn the moonwalk. I can moonwalk. Can you moonwalk? Yeah, bro. Dude, I want to learn how to know. moonwalk. I was born on Michael Jackson's birthday. Oh, no shit. Yeah, August, That's what's up. August 29th. August 29th. Nice. Yeah. I'm August 7th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice, bro. Leo. Leo. Yeah, some of my best friends are Leo. Thoroughbred Leo. I've had people guess that I'm a Leo before they even know my birthday. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, for sure. What well, I have a really weird connection to with lions because my last name stems from the German word for lion, and it's like fucking like old school like tribe of Judah, like and like that's like we were like, yeah, like it stems back from that. And then I'm also a Leo, and my last name literally means lion. So it'd be a cool tattoo. I don't have a single tattoo, but I want to get a lot. <laughs> man so uh so do you got any new music coming out i got a lot of new music coming out i'm actually working with four different producers right now on four different sounds oh okay nice nice bro that's what's up um one thing i also um i totally forgot to mention it earlier when we were talking about the product and everything like that i have an idea for a product that i would fucking love 
love to be able to fucking push. Um, and, and I want to make my own hippie speedball branded coffee flavored blunt wraps. It's a brilliant idea. Isn't that a great idea? I'd smoke that. And they fucking, they don't exist. There's no companies that have coffee flavored wraps. Get on it, man. I know. I know. I'm working with it right now, actually. So I want to, oh, and I'm, I want to work with um, either Dutch or uh, Crop Kings. I think Dutch would be really cool, but Crop Kings would make it so I can actually sell it in the dispensaries. Because I can have it in the dispos, convenience stores, grocery stores, and stuff like that. Have you ever had a Crop King? I don't think so. So a Crop King is like a, um, it's a hemp blunt wrap, but it's tobacco inspired. Hmm. And it also has like an adhesive gum on there that you literally just has like a strip so you don't even have to lick it. You just freaking can just pull it up and then just seal it up. And then it just basically, it's just, and it's, it's really nice because I don't really care for most hemp blunt wraps. And like this one actually feels like a regular wrap. And so you can actually wrap it up a lot easier. That's dope. Yeah, for sure. What you been smoking on these days, bro? I've been hitting a lot of oil recently, which is nice out of pocket for me because I testing all the product to make it, you know? Oh yeah. I had to <laughs> nice. like hit a lot of pins, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, I bet. So I bet your tolerance got through the fucking, fucking roof. Fucking roof, man. <laughs> yeah. And then I just recently was like, oh, you know, all right, I'm going to, get back to smoking flour, you know, now. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, and I just, it makes me really appreciate the flour again. Oh how, yeah. How, how light, light the smoke is compared to that. Fuck um, yeah, bro. And, yeah. So it was like going down to Southern Oregon and some of my friends, you know, have harvests that they, you know, buds that they still have from their harvest. Mm -hmm. And so I'd be smoking what they grew and I'm like, Oh yeah. Back to my roots, baby. Yeah. So, um, high uh what was it high octane mint s sherbet high octane mint sorbet That's oh okay nice bro i've never yeah. had that before oh gas bro nice gas. <laughs> hell and yeah then i went to when i was in grants pass i went to tamron's a really cool dispensary down there it's an all female owned dispensary and they're like really big on education mm. and like coming out with like the newest like I, I first heard about uh, CBG from them. Oh, okay. Like nice. way before any dispensary was putting like a sign out that said CBG, you know, oh, okay. they weren't even like talking about CBG and nice. then these people, you know, were educating their customers about it. So they always listed like the contents inside all the buds. That's fucking sick. And they were all about education and everybody in there is smart about the buds. Mm -hmm. So every time I'm in Grants Pass, I go to Tamron's. And I just show some love and, you know, pick up some bomb. And Fuck so yeah, bro. they had the blueberry muffins and that's like one of the, um, you know, the, the strains in blueberry pancakes. I was say probably one of one of blueberry pancakes parents yeah, is the parents. blueberry muffins. Yeah, nice. That's one of my favorite strains. I too. love it, man. And so I was like, yeah, I got to try your blueberry muffins. And theirs was really fire. Whoever Fuck yeah. grew it. Yeah. Shout out to them. I had this blueberry muffins that I got from Khalifa one time. And it like it it was the closest to actually tasting like blueberry muffins I've ever had in a strain. It was fucking crazy how much it tasted like actually like blueberry muffins. And I had it I had it rolled up in one of those honey fusion dutches. Mm. And I remember everybody at the social club was like, "Bro, what the fuck is that? That smells so good." <laughs> because it just smelled like it. It was just like sweet and so delicious. That's one of my favorite strains. Yeah. If I ever started a cannabis company, I'd probably want to call it Regular Weed. Like, you know, just go like old school, you know, because everything like because I know there's a lot of people that are just kind of crave just like, you know, it's like everything's getting real complicated with the weed. It's like, dude, just give me some bud. It's like, you know, just let me smoke some. Let me let me twist it up and see what see what it feels like. You know, yeah. I kind of miss those days at times. Miss the days where you just meet up with somebody real quick. A trustworthy some... homie that you bought new fucking had that fucking bomb shit. Yeah. And then you would fucking be able to meet up with them and then you'd smoke out together and then you fucking part your ways and then, you know, go about do your thing and then get more weed later. Those 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 days were kind of nice. I kind of miss those days at times because also with the way that the cannabis uh culture is like in a major just like shift right now that i'm noticing like it's becoming definitely a lot more corporate like and a lot more cutthroat and a lot more caddy it's got the three nasty c's hmm. <laughs> corporate cutthroat and caddy Damn. is something i'm noticing a lot but also but that's only certain venues i can't really put that on the whole cannabis culture because it's only certain aspects i have some people that i've dealt with and i fuck with that are super fucking awesome you know and they're not really about all that fucking stupid drama shit there's a lot of that going on. It's like a high school lunchroom. I say it's like teenagers with adult money. Damn. <laughs> There's a lot of that. 
I don't know if you're kind of like tied up with it at all because I know you're kind of just more centered around music. You know, definitely into horticulture. I can say that. Yeah. You know, been you know since I was. Grow, growing up in Southern Oregon, you know. For sure. Yeah, most definitely. Dutch bros and soil. So you've probably seen the shift, too, in the way it kind of the whole vibe and the whole feeling of a lot of it. Yep. And the prices. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Oh, my God. I know. Those things are so jacked up. And they're mm-hmm. just always topsy-turvy. And it just fucks up a lot of things yeah yeah for sure for sure man and it sucks because i feel like there's also becoming a bit of a loss of the original like hippie culture you know and that's one thing i really miss there was something special about that i do recall those days you know when it wasn't commercialized yet yeah (laughs) there was just that there is something special about that for sure i should have been on airplane mode oh my boy travis adams is calling i just recorded um music with him yo trav what's going on Hey, what you doing, man? Hey, I'm actually on a podcast right now, the Hippie Speedball Podcast. So you're on the mic right now, like <laughs> like on the podcast, too. What's up, man? What's happening? Hippie Speedball. Yeah, my boy Joe is hosting right now. So I was just talking to him about some some cool stuff, music, cannabis, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, taking where the conversation takes us. Got super lit before we started. Yep. Oh, that's right. That's uh, hey man, you got the right man in the building for that. That's a that sounds like a brand boy forte. Yeah, man. Let me give you a call back a little bit later. But uh, yeah, shout out to T Rav on the microphone. We just got done doing six six hours in the studio this last Saturday. Fuck yeah, let's talk about it, man. First project. So hit me up, dude. Let's. I'll check out your music, man. Maybe you can come on the podcast sometime. That's right, man. I love it. I love it. That sounds great. All right. Love and respect to both y'all and uh, enjoy that podcast. All right. Talk to you soon. Love, bro. Okay. Later. Take care. Six hours in the studio, bro. Six That's hours. what's up, man. Sometimes <laughs> I'd be pro- executive producing for other artists. Okay. You know? Okay. So, so you're like, so you're like working as an engineer too? Not as an or? engineer. So, okay. So my background, you know, is in music engineering. For sure. And production yeah you know beat making Mm -hmm. the whole you know actual getting my hands dirty but i kind of when i became an artist myself i kind of just took those skills and i have like my knowledge of that is really high so i'm able to coordinate Mm -hmm. really well i'm able to find the right engineer the right studio for this person's project Mm -hmm. i already know what they're because of their demos and the way that they're telling me like their vision is for sure I know exactly who to hit up, and then from, oh okay, you know from nice. I know what beats to buy them, nice. you know. So I'll I'll go shopping for them, and I'll do like consultation and be like, all right, so what's your vision with this project? And they'll tell me they'll spit for me, you know. They'll tell me their vision, yeah, not for like, sure, not that, but the I want the dream, you know. Yeah, I want them to go off on a tangent and get crazy, you know, and mm-hmm. tell me the vision, and I just try to keep their vision when we actually have to like execute it in the real world you nice. know physically in the real world so you basically just take it and just map it out for them yeah but and i'm but you, i'm there though i'm there the whole way for them i'm there the whole way my goal when i do this type of work is i want the artist to come in and be the artist and not have to think about oh I, this is going to happen later or this you know i might have to change this or make a decision you just want them to focus on the music yeah i want them to give us the best takes nice i want them to stay in that booth and just feel like they're on stage yeah you know at an arena that's dope. i want them to feel like they're the coolest motherfucker in the world makes me think if you're like a you're like a film director for music because it, it's like it you're is. taking that vision and you're literally crafting it and finding the right ways to make it become a reality and that's exactly what a film director does <laughs> and you're just there assembling you it the right way that's fucking dope dude i mean i've never i've never spent six hours in a studio before like that that, that sounds like a fucking exhausting day for sure bro <laughs> It sounds productive, though, it, man. It, honestly, I'm going to tell you, it is, like, the, the fact that I'm even, like, calling this work I know. is crazy to me. <laughs> That's awesome. I know, I know people always say that, like, oh, if it's not work if you're having fun, you know. But you, if you really, truly live like that, it's such a different it's – so, it's so real. Like, how am I in the studio for six hours? I'm not even making my music. I'm helping someone make their music. But we're creating – Oh, for sure. We're coming from scratch. Like, 
I bet it's amazing. But I mean, by exhausting, I just mean that would be a long day to, you know, be like that would be a long day to be in any single place for me, at least, you know, that's <laughs> what I'm so that's that's the thing is that was this artist that I'm working with T Rav. That was his decision was to do a whole day. But some of these artists, I'll say, hey, I get it. Attention span is crazy. Me, I only need three or four hours at a time. Yeah, you know, yeah, for on, sure. If I'm doing one song, I just book a two-hour session. Oh, okay. And then there I get go. I get out of there, you know, because it, like you said, attention span. I want to be my full brand boy, you know, self for two to three hours a day. That's it. Mm -hmm. I want to just be re regular, dude. Yeah. That's all I spend really with that energy is like two or three hours a day. Yeah. You know. Well, you but, obviously get a lot done in those two or three hours, though. Yeah. You know, because you found out what works for you. Yeah. You know, some people are able to do a lot in a really short period of time, and some people kind of need it stretched out, like, you know, throughout the day. I'm sure you deal with that a lot with all the different artists you fucking have met. Yep. But that allows me to carve out space for the other artists because that's something I'm, I'm not just mm -hmm. an artist myself. You know, I'm a music executive, so I like doing these things. for it. I, I just started doing it because I was like, I, it's either this or work at McDonald's until I get my music off the ground. Yeah, fuck that. You know, or work at, well, go back to working at Wells Fargo. You know, hi, yeah. I'm Brendan. What can I do for you? <laughs> yeah, you know? I can never picture that. I'm not, no, man, come on. I got to, I just figured, uh, this, well, if people are, if there's a market for it, let me help other artists, you know? So I like to, you know, take care of my shit and really focus and really just live it. Like, yeah. Fully. And then, when I get done, you know, pop out of the studio or pop out of the, my session for myself, I get to really take that energy and focus on another artist without having lingering thoughts about myself. Yeah. You know, yeah, for sure. Like, man, I should, this guy's in the booth right now, man. That should be me. If I was in there, I'd be killing it right now, mm. man. Damn. When is it my next studio? I'm like, no, nah, man, I just did my shit. Yeah. I took exactly. care of myself first. Always. You know, mm -hmm. I got my projects lined up, you know, yeah. as other artists come along, you know, but some people have that attention span that they're like, let me just do a three hour session. And then next week we'll do a three hour session, you know, mm -hmm. break it up. So, some artists are like, I want to go in there. Maybe they're not like me. Maybe they are like, oh, I can be in there for 10 hours straight and just record my whole album with you. Mm. That's what he did. He was like, let's just go six hours and record as many songs as we That's can. That's fucking dope, though. And he's coming back, and we're going to do another six hours. And, nice. <laughs> <you know? laughs> That's what's up. And the music's pretty so, good, too. It, it, I'm really impressed with his music. Nice. Yeah. It, Fuck yeah. It's, um, he, he rides motorcycles. And, nice. You know, he's all, and he's all tatted up. He's got this swaggy look. And um, so he's got... Like, the name sounds really familiar. Yeah, you'll be hearing a lot about T-Rav coming up soon because I'm going to be posting a lot of him on Rip City Basement. You know, he's a Rip City Basement artist. Oh, okay. So he's come. He's going through the whole camp, you know, with the, the uh, like I said, the development, nice. the, the radio show, That's the so podcast, sick, man. the showcase. He's going to get the full package mm -hmm. to launch his first project mm -hmm. versus just... Making your first project and releasing it. Let's hope it goes viral. <laughs> All right. Six months later. Well, maybe I should make another one. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, you, if you're going to release music and take it serious, then you have to have a rollout plan straight up. Oh, for you know, sure. Like, well, this is what professional of artists have done throughout all of the ages of making music. Yeah. You know, it's like you have, you know, your you have your your crafting and writing process, and then you have your recording process, you have your mastering process, you have your engine, like you have all these different venues, like avenues that come out. You know, it's like, but now everybody's so like. I, th I think it's one of the reasons why that's kind of like. Um, there's artists, not a lot. I don't really know, but there's artists out there that probably don't understand that mm. because nowadays the whole process is being documented mm. so they kind of feel like they need to rush it so they can go on to the next part of documenting it. totally so it kind of becomes more about that than it does right. actually sitting and putting in the work and making the music and stuff like that which is like you know it's i'm sure there's a lot of artists that do that but there, i know for a fact 100 percent through people i've met not that i've had on the podcast but artists that i've met that um don't really like you know they don't really understand that concept you know, of mm -hmm. just like they just kind of want to have the next viral song or the next viral video, something yeah. to be on Lyrical Lemonade, you know, to be on yeah. No Jumper. I'm on Lyrical this. Lemonade, man. That's what's I'm up. on Lyrical Lemonade yeah, playlist. That's you know? sick, yep. dude. That's sick. I didn't even know that. That's or fucking Portland dope, Drip. man. Portland Drip is like 
number nine on their playlist. Hell yeah! Right now. And dude, thank you so much for the theme song, by the way. For sure, man. Yeah, for sure. Before we yeah, dive into perfect. that, I had one question that I wanted to ask you when you were talking about, like, you know, it's like I could work at McDonald's or go back to Wells Fargo. Do you? Are you like? Because I'm one of those people. Like, I'm just not. Like, I, for some reason, I don't have the the same kind of discipline to work like a nine to five job as mm. I do to put towards other things. Mm -hmm. I'm literally just not wired that way. And I'm just like, I'm, I, are you like that too? Where it's like, it, you'd find it fucking just like, you're just not wired to have a nine to five. So you're finding your own venues to make it happen anyway. Pretty much, man. Yeah. yeah. You know? It I'm sucks. Just, it's, I've it, always been that way. I'm so though. jealous of people that can just like, you know, like, all right, fuck it. I just, you know, work this regular job, you know, rather than it doesn't have to be exactly nine to five. I just mean like just a regular full time Monday through Friday job. Like, you know, that people do. I'm very jealous because for some reason I'm just not wired that way. And it sucks. It really sucks. But I can, but I'm also able to make enough money during the day anyway and spend more time with my kid, work on more time on my creativity, and I still am able to go out and fucking make my money. Mm -hmm. And then every single day. And that's what that's one reason why I was delayed in doing releasing any episodes because I was like we were, we were like a really really terrible financial position mm. and literally every single amount of my mental bandwidth was dedicated on getting us out of this position and making it so, so we can get back stabilized because ever since we moved in here we've been basically playing catch up because it was just the way it all worked out we had to we got approved for this apartment and it was the only one that was really available at the time. And so like, we love it. Don't get me wrong. We got approved for the apartment, but we had to put down our deposit within 48 hours of getting approved. And so like, that was like all of our money. And mm -hmm. literally ever since then we were playing catch up. And then we got to a position where we were about to lose our place because like we got hit with a notice and then we were still didn't have the money in time. Damn. And literally in like a, um, like it got down to like, you know, like down to like the last like four hours of needing to get the money in there. <laughs> like it got, it got fucking down to the wire, but I've been busting my ass and doing everything I can to make it happen. And it's been fucking working. And now things are getting stabilized, which is why I'm able to release a lot more episodes. Dope man. You know, for you. thank you. Appreciate that, bro. Cause when it comes down to it, like I said, in this one video I made, like I'm a dad first, like that's as much as I love, love making content. If I, my family's in a shitty spot, I need to get us out of that shitty spot. Mm, respect, like that's, respect. that's, that's what comes first. And, but I was that. still recording a lot though, too. Like that's, that's why I have fucking eight episodes that I'm dropping like one right after another. There you go. Like, and it's like, but I've still been, it's like, I've been gone, but I haven't been bored. <laughs> like It's like, I've been busy as fuck. Fuck. And I just, I feel bad for the, like we were talking about earlier. I feel bad for the people that I had on the show, you know, that like, you know, were on here like a month ago and I'm just like just now getting the episodes out yeah. or there was two that I had on the show. PD boy was one of them. And then my homeboy Antonio, he goes by J nine and he, um, he, uh, like those episodes literally got lost because my fucking computer updated and for some reason they were gone and I couldn't fucking find them. Couldn't recover them. They're just gone. And so I fucking had to have them back over and re-record them. But it's okay because they turned out to be fucking bangers. So it's all good. And I haven't had a bad episode yet. Right Still on, to man. this day, man. Good job. Yeah, thank you. And like what's, what I was saying earlier is I really appreciate the use of the theme song, bro. Because the way that all worked out was so amazing. Yeah. And you said awesome. you had some plans for that song. We were kind of talking about that. And you wanted to bring it up on the podcast. Well, I did want to... I was wanting to tell you that um, because you were you were talking about that being perfect for your uh, like the theme song is like it's 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 literally yeah <laughs> i'm from oregon i'm from oregon i drink my coffee and smoke my reefer in the morning <laughs> and i look like this guy right all happy and green and shit exactly and just lit up coffee you know? cannabis and dope people there we go that's what you know? the show is all about man. love it love it so the next stage for this song you know um because it really is like an Oregon anthem song, you know, it's like represents the whole state of Oregon. You 100%. Know? Bro. Every city can relate to this in yep. Oregon. Yep. Yep. So um, I really noticed when I was down there in Southern Oregon for my birthday weekend, I just noticed from like Eugene down how much support I have. I was going to ask how much love you that. get down in that area. I, bet I you're really didn't. I, I did not realize it. That's until, awesome. Bro. You know, I go down there all the time and, and uh, perform, but. I don't know. For some reason, like compliments and stuff that I that I usually get when I'm down there, I just kind of let them go one in, one in one ear and out the other. 
and mm. I I receive them, I acknowledge them, you know, but I just I never like drink my own Kool Aid because got gotcha, you, gotcha. even though I might be popping, you know, in that area, I just know how much more work I have to do yeah. in other areas <laughs> for sure, you know. And so uh, here in Portland, you know, I think most artists would agree it's a little competitive because everybody's trying to aim for that spot of like, I'm going to be the first Oregon rapper to really put on for the town. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody who actually came up through the Portland scene, mm -hmm. you know, not just like this is an artist. They're born in Portland. Not like that, but like. This is an artist that came up through the showcase circuit, the yes, podcast, yes, worked yes. their way up, got some things, you know, got started getting features, started getting connected. And then, you know, that that story hasn't been told yet. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of artists and different camps kind of spread out throughout the town. And they're all, and, you know, they all kind of have like their Robin Hood that they're rooting for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so it's, for sure. Most so it's kind of spread out. There's a lot of. And I, I honestly, like straight up from the bottom of my heart, that's why I moved up to Portland. In 2008, I came to Portland. You know, I, I was like, I want to get connected with all these people, mm. you know, because like my mentality is like, I'm a player. I want to get connected with other players. Oh, for sure. You know? Definitely. And like, like, and that's just how I, I get down, you know. It's like we were talking about in the first episode about how like, you know, it's like trying to do this is almost like trying to get into a popular nightclub. You know, it's like you don't really it's like, you know, you belong in there, but, you know, you don't want to wait in line. So you got to figure out your own way to get in there. Mm. You know, it's like so you, you go back and you find the line cook, you start bullshitting and they let you in through the kitchen. There you go. You know, that's always my mentality. Yeah. So, you know, I, I feel like. Uh, when I cross that kind of border down into southern Oregon, Eugene is kind of like the line, the drawing line for me. OK. You know, once you pass southern like Eugene and down, I just realize there's not a lot of pockets. There's not a lot of groups of people. There's not a lot of rappers. Oh, for sure. I can imagine. Trying to do a certain style, you know? So when they hear something like, I'm from Oregon, I'm from Oregon. I drink my coffee, smoke my reefer in the, in the morning. morning. I rolled two J's up and then I domed them. And when I'm done touring and performing, send me back to Oregon. I'm from Oregon. I love that shit you know, so much, bro. People from Eugene down are like, I am from Oregon. I drink my coffee smoke. This song's about me. Yes. In this small town, Dutch bros on every Kona. And we take pride in growing marijuana. I'm in a little city right next to the water. That's why everybody in their mama came from California. Man, everybody knows like, damn, man. We, we're from Oregon, man. All these Californians came in here. You know, yeah. that's like always been the uh, the the thing. You know, for years, like Oregonians have said that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the thing. So you know, like just that song is like, it's really about Oregon as a whole, mm -hmm. and so people in Northern Oregon relate to it too because it's very similar too. You got in a city right next to the water, you know. So uh, it really represents the whole state, but I just really do feel. In Southern Oregon, I, that's where I have the most love. Nice. I, I was really, I really felt it this last weekend when I was down there, and that's I just kind of, awesome, bro. I finally stopped and smelled the roses, you know, because like I said, usually the compliments go in one ear out the other. Had that feeling for you, man. It was, it was amazing. Like I just park on G Street, get out of my car, someone walks up to me, brand boy, what's up, you know. And I'm just, oh, crazy. I go into the vitamin store. Oh, what's up? Hey, I was listening to your song. We were just playing it. You know? <laughs> That's so crazy, bro. Go into the coffee shop. These you are know? total strangers. Well, not strangers. I know a lot of people in this town. You oh, know? okay. Okay. Nice. So, nice. That's sick, bro. Yeah, that they is know so me. dope. Yeah. It's that just, so it's, it's just different. And it's like, everybody's rooting for me down there. Did kinda. you like walk into somewhere and then your song's playing in the background? That no, that did not happen on this trip. That would be cool though. Um, Has that happened before? Yeah, yeah. People, nice. yeah. <laughs> that's people sick. will see me like coming up, and they'll you know switch it to my song or something. Oh, that's know? what's up. Hell yeah. Yeah. People will know I'm in town, or they'll like be driving, ra going rafting. My my homie George is that you know his name's George, but in the I'm from Oregon song, I say my homie Jorge finna cook them enchiladas. Saturday yeah, 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 night, yeah, yeah. Barbecue carne asadas. <laughs> Friends, I got a lot of them. Family across the globe, but my Oregon homies already know. Yo. That's about him because nice. he makes really good carne asada. He's Fuck got this yeah, famous dude. George's Every time chicken. I hear that line, I'm craving carne asada. So because <laughs> I get down on some carne, bro. Yeah, yeah. He he does he does great. Might have to make that shit tonight actually for dinner. That sounds dank now. <laughs> you know he's he does barbecues really good. Nice. So um, that line was about him, and so like he was going rafting with a bunch of 
my art, like our friends, my cousin. Nice. And he took a video of them playing that line, you know, <laughs> That's and sick, so bro. things like that is like, I really can tell that this means something to my, my area. Southern, song, Southern Oregon. It's a fucking Oregon theme song, bro. Like, and it's yeah. everybody in the state fucking loves it. And everybody that's even not even from Oregon, all the people that like, cause I have a decent amount of fans down in Las Vegas and they fucking love that that's song, so, bro. They love that. And that those are the ones that asked me, they're like, dude, did he make that for you? And I was like, completely coincidence, my friend, <laughs> but it fitting. It Very just was fitting. so fitting. That was just the universe putting us both in each other's path, you mm-hmm. know, because like, I love how, I love how the universe does that. Like, I love how it freaking, you know, will, it puts, it puts you in a certain direction. And then once you start going there and all of a sudden there's this other little connection that pops up, you're like, oh, wow, I just, I'm already right here. That's really cool that this happened to work out that way, you know? And it's like, and I love talking to artists and you're a dope fucking artist and you're a dope fucking person. So you're perfect for the podcast. And you made this song that is like perfect for the fucking podcast. It's really cool, man. It is so crazy the way it all worked out. I know I'm, I'm happy that it's your theme song because and I know it's it's got it's going to help out. It's going to help out you. It's going to help out me. It's it's just a win win. You know, the more people that hear it and the song is actually uh, going on a radio campaign in Southern Oregon. That's so cool. So while I was down there, I had this epiphany is like I'm I'm the urban I'm the urban music director and hip hop coordinator at 90.7 FM KBU. That's my official position at KBU. I'm also a radio DJ, Rip City Basement Radio on KBU. There's a place in Seattle. There's a place in Los Angeles, a place in Dallas. Rip City Basement Radio is syndicated. That's so cool. But I'm not doing anything with radio in Southern Oregon. What the hell? So while I was down there just taking a run up and down uh, Bridge Street, you know, going to the All Sports Park and then like driving up and down 6th and 7th Street, I just had this epiphany, like, there's a lot of small radio stations like KBU, mm-hmm. you know, KBU X-Ray, you know, Portland Radio Project, you For know, sure. the numbers. There's, like, smaller radio stations similar to that down there in Southern Oregon. Nice. There's a university, Southern Oregon University, that has a radio station. Okay. So I'm thinking, I just had this epiphany, like, why don't I come down here and do a radio campaign? And that way, it will literally be, like my hometown is the ones that broke the song and that story has a lot of appeal you know yeah for real i didn't have to sense yeah i didn't pay for something in the city i didn't pay a big media company to like please you know you went back to your roots i went back to my roots and i just walked in the door and said hey what's up it's brendan from high school hey i got this song called i'm from oregon you know Let me see what I can, you know, do for you. Can I like support your radio station, tag you on my gram? Can, can I come in for an interview and just keep my stuff in rotation, but I'm going to do that times 10. Yeah. All at the same time. If you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. That's what I'm about to do is grizzly. (laughs) (laughs) Grizzly. Fuck. (laughs) I'm telling you, grizzly, grizzly, uh, wintergreen is going to sponsor me after this move. I'm a grizzly bear, baby. And I took over the Southern Oregon backwoods, homegrown style. Fuck yeah, bro. That's what's up. I I love that you want to like, you know, go and like, I love that you want to show that kind of love to where you started, man, because there's a lot of people that forget that. You know, like that they get so caught up on what they're doing in this present moment and they forget about the first ones to show them love, you know, or the first ones to really start pushing them in the right Mm -hmm. direction and everything. And that's so important to realize and be objective to and be able to be like, yeah, you know, you guys are the ones that helped me out with this. So like, we're going to fucking do this shit together. They don't even know this really. But like when I perform once a year, I perform once a year at this place called the Sound Lounge Okay. in Grants Pass. It has the best sound in the whole city okay it's just an incredible venue fits about just the way the acoustics are and the the personnel and the engineer oh gotcha the actual like the actual sound quality itself and the fucking nice they know what they're doing that's what's up so i love performing there um it's like a bunch of former roadies for fucking bands and shit (laughs) like exactly (laughs) people who yeah that's sick pimpin j if anybody in portland remembers pimpin j that's the dude that owns the Grants Pass Sound Lounge now. He 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 has roots here in Portland. He used nice. to own a nightclub up here. Hell after yeah. After hours nightclub. Shout out to Pimp and Jay. Yeah, man. This guy's solid. And he's booked me, you know, like four years in a row. So nice. I'm about to do my fifth show at the Sound Lounge. And um, every time I go there, my 
it's Thanksgiving weekend. So people are back in town. Nice. So my hometown is like, it's like a reunion, but a Bren Boy show. That's so fucking dope, and bro. And people go crazy for it. They just turn up and show so much love. And they're like, you know, I love you, Bren Boy. I'm like, I love you too. Like, you guys, are, so fucking, you guys are my people. That's so dope, man. But something I've never told them on stage, I, I may, maybe I will tell them this next time I'm, I'm out there, is like, when I'm writing these songs and these stories, I'm writing about us. I'm not trying to be like, oh, yeah, Bay Area, L.A. representing. Yeah, my, no, co- my cousin's yeah. in L.A. You know, my cousin's in L.A. <laughs> you know, <laughs> There's a lot of that. Or like, yeah, you know, I got a cousin from, from Oakland. Or people that I'm moved. from Oakland, bro. People you that know? were like moved to Portland when they were like two from L.A. It's like, oh, I'm from L.A. Oh, yeah, yeah, like that. You yeah, know? <laughs> I, there's, I dealt with a lot of those people. Yeah. So, you know, I was born in Germany, but I moved to the United States when I was two. So... <laughs> I wouldn't tell people that are like, where'd you grow up? I want to be like Germany. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Dude, I would, well, I'm from Germany. You know, you yeah. know? No, I'm from, I'm from Oregon, bro. My song isn't, I'm from Germany. I'm from Heidelberg. <laughs> 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 you know? Heidelberg. Heidelberg. I drink my beer. I eat my pretzels in the morning. In the morning. <laughs> Schnitzel. Schnitzel. Whatever that means. Strudel. Strudel. Yeah. <laughs> Nine. Know. That's the only word I remember. No Sprechen Sie Deutsch. <laughs> so... Yeah, man. That's fucking so dope, man. That Excited. is so cool. Like that that's like uh I think that's really dope that you're fucking doing that, man. So like whenever you when's the show that you're gonna be playing down there? I'm gonna be playing it um Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. Yep, Thanksgiving yep. weekend. And and you know, I'm gonna do something special. I'm gonna uh, my goal is to um break even on the show. Okay. I, I want I want people I want to put so much energy into it's like a thank you, muchas gracias type of show. Nice. Thank you for supporting me this whole year. I'm gonna throw something that's so dope. And when you walk into the sound lounge, you're not even gonna you're not even gonna recognize that it's the sound lounge because it's just so different in there. And I want people to feel like they leave that concert, they leave the Bren Boy show Thanksgiving weekend 2022, thinking, damn, every dollar of this ticket went into this concert yeah. every last thing he didn't he spared no expense to make us have a good experience not just hey here's a ticket come see my show gotcha yes yeah you know no come have like a crazy experience with all your friends i love that you know it's a reunion style like people are you know from all the high schools are there another thing that's often neglected is the live show like the actual experience of being the at the concert, bro. you know, a lot of people don't realize like going to a concert isn't just listening to the music. It's not just seeing the artist. It's right. an experience and it's you an need experience. to, and then that's, and that, that's so fucking sick that you're doing that for them because like I said, that's something that's I think often neglected because there's like, there's a lot of artists that will just kind of just simply walk around and just kind of move a bit on stage. Mm-hmm. And like, it's like, that's in my opinion, that's not enough. No, I want, like, I want, I want my, my people, my grants past family, I want them to be looking at me on stage like, whoa, this is some superstar shit. Exactly. You know? Treat it like Ooh. it's a fucking arena show. I like, want people just to feel the energy. And when I go on stage, I want them just to, the audience to feel confident about themselves and be like, yo, that's me up there. And I, I went awesome. to school with this guy. I know this guy. That's like, that's me up there, you know, and I want to give them a sense of confidence and like. You can go out and really just be who you are and stick your chest out. I mean, shit, I'm from Grants Pass, Oregon, and I'm a professional rapper. What the fuck? <laughs> so fucking sick. You can do sick. whatever. If I could do that. So fucking come sick, Come on now. Bro. Let's go. That is so fucking dope, man. Like, And that's, that's like, I am I'm, I'm I want to fucking go down there and see this show. Like, it sounds amazing. I'll be there, bro. Dope, bro. Like, fuck yeah. Hell I will yeah. totally go down there Thanksgiving weekend. Awesome, we'll be on man. Saturday or Friday? Saturday. Sick, yep. dude. Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend. I'm going to fucking be there, I bro. I got you on my Let guest me- list, bro. Dude, Done. thank you. Appreciate Done. that, man. Locked in, bro. I can't wait to fucking see that because, like, and I'm like, uh, I've been getting the itch to go to a lot more live music, actually. So I kind of want to start making the rounds and let me know, like, so let me know if there's a good show happening or anything like that. Or next time you're putting on a Rip City Basement show, that way I can fucking pop in because I've been getting the itch to see some live music lately because I just went to the, um, I just went to the Sublime and Incubus concert. The Sublime with Rome? Yeah. And Incubus. Yeah. Oh, I bet that was dope. Where was bro, that at? It was up in the uh, Ridgefield at the Amphitheater. Oh, shit, bro. Bro, That's it was tight. so fucking dope. And the, uh, so originally our seats, hold on. 
but originally we were up in the lawn, right? And but the lawn was closed, so I don't know if they just maybe didn't sell enough tickets or what was going on with it. But the lawn was closed, and we were like we couldn't even get up there anyway. So we were just kind of standing by like the like the aisle basically, and like we were just kind of standing in the aisle. And then I told my my friend Mario, shout out Mario for taking me to this show. It was fucking awesome. And he, uh, I was like, dude, let's just go as far as we can before they tell us no. And I was like, let's just go as far as we can. We got all the way up to basically like the beginning of the hundred section, like right up against like the gate. And so we were maybe like, like maybe like a hundred feet away from the stage, maybe yeah. like less than that, maybe like 80 feet, 70 feet. And we, uh, then eventually this guy, like, uh, the, you know, somebody that worked there approached these two dudes in front of us. And he started talking to them, and then I was like, okay, we're about to get busted, but let's just sit here anyway until he tells us to leave. And so we were just chilling, watching the show, you know, having fun and shit. And then he was like, the guy, instead of telling us to leave, he was like, hey, do you guys want to go sit in the 100 section? And then we're like, yeah. And he's like, okay, here you go. And he just handed us a couple tickets. He's like, just he's like that way you'll know where your seats are. He's like, I just can't have you standing here, but if you want to get closer, here's some tickets for That's you. That's cool. That's cool. Dude. What a cool dude. So fucking sick. And then we got to see the rest of the show. Like, it was like, we were literally, they were, uh, Sublime was playing Santeria when we got to move. So we got to wow. see, like, the finale of the show from that area. That's and then dope. we got to see Incubus play next. And I'm not really much, I'm not, I don't really listen to a lot of Incubus. I don't dislike them. I just don't listen to them a lot. But fucking A, did they put on a show? Like, holy shit. That's dope. That dude can fucking sing. I had, like, I had, and I have so much respect for people who actually, like, sing and project because it's, it's like, it's, it's it, like, that, that's a quality of a really good fucking singer mm. as someone who can really project. And this guy literally had the microphone, like, way out here at times. Like, and that's he was lit. still fucking maintaining the same volume. That's dope. It was crazy. It was a great fucking show. And I haven't been to a concert like that in so fucking long. Like, I've never been to one like that. I think the last band that I saw in concert was um, my friend took me to The Darkness. Never heard of them. You know that song? It's like, I believe in a thing called love. Just listen to the rhythm of my heart. There's yeah. a chance we can make it now. Yeah, that, That's that the band. Darkness? Yeah, they're called The Darkness. Wow. But if you listen to a lot of their music, they're very like, they sound like almost like in like a 70s or like an 80s rock band. Uh, like they have very like a classic rock kind of feel to them. Dude, they put on a tight. fucking killer show. That's tight. Killer show. Like the fucking, the, the singers, like it, it was awesome because they had so much crowd interaction. Like in between, like fucking, like you know, in between songs, they would just be sitting there bullshitting with the fucking crowd and stuff like that. It was so fucking sick because it was at the Crystal Ballroom. Okay, so small venue, really fucking dope, and it was like it was it was a lot of fun. And then before then, the last one I had seen is that was also at Ridgefield, as I saw, um, uh, Black Sabbath. Wow, and that was awesome. <laughs> that was amazing to fucking see. And I think that was going to be their final tour. I don't know, because that was right before Ozzy started getting really sick and his health is going down the shitter oh, yeah. right now. Ozzy. I know. Ozzy. That's going to be a tragic day. I don't even want to put that into the air. <laughs> Man, uh, I'm fucking super lit. I'm super lit. How you feeling right now, bro? I'm good, man. I'm wavy. I'm Whatever we smoked in that blunt got me. This uh, that donkey butter blueberry pancakes is holding me nice. This I've gotten so many good reviews about this. Like people saying, like it's such a good daytime thing, you know, because like you're stoned, but also you could go play some basketball. Yeah, you know. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's what's up, man. And that's how the joints were too. Can so I hit I, it again? Yeah, fuck yeah. Thank you. So I wanted it. it to translate the same way in the in the cartridges. Oh, is it off? Oh, no, you just got to give it a little good little puff to get it going. Boom. I had that little pop that you get like yeah. when you haven't hit it in a minute. Yeah, exactly. I, my, my pen gets that all the time. Yep, yep. Well, yeah, man, I'm excited about about this. The, the QR code goes straight to the music. No, you got so much fucking going on, bro. I'm I so do, happy man. for you. Oh, and uh, we were talking before the podcast, man. You were talking about acting. And yeah. stuff like that. And you wanted to, um, uh, you were asking me oh, if I was yeah, ever interested so in acting. I am definitely you interested are. in acting. Fuck yeah, I am. Yeah, you do good, man. Yeah, I recently. That means a um, lot to me. I recently signed a contract with a casting agency uh, in California. Congratulations, bro. Yeah. That's fucking sick, yeah, dude. I'm, I'm pretty That's excited. a big deal, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really big deal. Have you gotten any callbacks or anything? Well, it just, just happened. So, oh, okay. Um, nice. So I. 
I signed the deal and now I'm getting headshots. That's the next step. Mm. So I'm kind of growing out my hair right now because what I'm doing is I'm going to grow it out, cut it, take a, take a picture and then cut it again, medium, take some pictures yeah. and cut it really short. That's fucking like smart. The regular Bren boy cut, take some pictures and that, and with a different look, different outfits. And that way, when I can upload my headshots, they see all the different types of characters I can play. Absolutely, with a beard, without a beard, mm. you know, long, you know, longer beard, shorter beard, you know that because you know I have a lot of different looks. And you really. can probably grow a beard pretty pretty quickly too, yeah, huh? Pretty, very quickly. Nice. So yeah, I'm very excited about that. That's and fucking sick. Congratulations, thank bro. You, thank That's you. That's so dope, man. Yep, my but, my uh, agent and manager for this, Tiffany Gaines, uh, she's also the label owner. That I signed that name to. sounds really familiar. Yeah, well, she's a big deal in entrepreneurship and and music. Nice. Yeah, nice. she's got a lot of accolades in uh, hip hop for sure. Nice. And just in the uh, industry, like with creatives and entrepreneurship. Is she, is she the one that there's there's somebody that's like viral, and they have a kind of a similar name. Um, uh, they're, like their their videos have like gone viral, like and they're like they they basically help artists get into like music festivals. And I see their ads and their videos on fucking Instagram all the time. Is that her? She definitely helps artists do a lot of things, including yeah. getting getting into festivals. I'm not sure. It, it, I, it I might seen, not be the same girl. That's not how I met her. But yeah, um, but yeah she's legit. You know, like How'd you guys meet? Um, so there is an artist that I work with. I've become friends with him now. But he started off as a client of mine from Seattle or from Tacoma, Um but he has been locked up for the past 11 years. Mm. And so from behind the bars, he started a rap career. Nice. Yep. Shout out to Lo, L-O-E. Uh, that's how he spells it. Um, he became a rapper. Those are the first three letters of my last name. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> so he became a rapper and um, he's always rapped. But in the pen, he started releasing music, like recording over the jail phone actually making quality music and That's it's just sick. it's crazy i've been covering his story through the radio station for three years now mm. so we we've he's been on the show like five or six times that's so cool bro he, he's connected yeah. he's connected me with so many artists like glasses malone mac dre's first uh manager dj Derek b um keek the sneak um Tiffany, you know uh other people in the industry in the bay area you know heavy hitters down there He's connected me with so many people, um, all from prison. That's awesome. He's one of the most hardworking artists that I work with, and he's behind the walls. Yeah, he's just not lazy at all. No, for sure. Well, and also a lot of like there's a there's so many of those guys and, and ladies in prison that aren't lazy, and they're fucking some of the hardest working, most entrepreneur people that you'll ever fucking meet in your life. And that's why a lot of them are fucking killing it when they come out now, especially yep. in the social media game and stuff like that. A lot of those prisoner social media channels are fucking just blown yeah, yeah. up. I have high I have high expectations and hopes for Lowe when he comes out because he's got the skill set, like, straight up. I, don't, I wouldn't fuck with a rapper if they didn't have the skill set. Oh, for first sure. and foremost, I don't think you like, would fuck with anybody, no matter what it is, if they didn't have the skill set. Yeah. It's, it's more, it's more so a skill. I don't care what your following is or your situation. Like that can be changed, you know? Thank you. But if that. you're raw, thank you for that. There's not a lot of that anymore these days. You know what I'm saying? I'm a different breed. So like, that's why we're friends. Yeah. You know? <laughs> this guy's just got so much talent behind the microphone. He can really, really rap and tell a story and it's different it's pacific northwest so i love that you send know send me a link to his music i will yeah. when is he getting out um well hopefully you know uh pretty soon you know like within the next year nice so he's really close well um, when he gets out dude fucking i'd love to have him on the podcast i'll like, bring him that by would be sick. yeah he's a solid dude and um you know so he introduced me to tiffany he said hey i got this uh connection and she does uh distribution with artists but you kind of have to like you got to submit your music if she likes it then she'll reach out to you and set up a meeting but she don't she don't call her she's not going to answer the phone if you just keep calling her yeah you know like this lady's the real deal so just don't play with her time you know go in as a reference submit the music see if she likes it if she likes it she'll reach back out to you so i sent her blueberry pancakes the demo version and she hit me back and said oh so you're a storyteller that's great. What you want to set up a phone call? 
And I was like, yes. Fuck it. How did that feel to get that response? Oh, I I was pretty confident in my music. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But there's still like a part where you're just like, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You know? (laughs) But also, I I don't ever get gassed up about something until the paperwork is in my motherfucking hands. Absolutely. Because I know there's talk is just talk. Yep. So I just. And you've probably dealt with that a million times at this point. Dude, I've talked to so many people at high profile, like very high profile people. And it's like, oh, just because I have a meeting with this person does not mean like anything. So don't even be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to quit my day job. Oh no, for sure. Yeah. You know, so I'm I'm like just always like, okay, I take meetings all the time as as an executive. You mm-hmm. know, at, through radio and media, I do this all day, you know, talk to high profile people, but I wasn't looking to get signed. Yeah. I wasn't looking to get signed. So distribution was kind of like, well, I don't really want a distribution deal, but I'll at least call her and yeah. see what's going on. Then once we had the conversation and she kind of laid it out, like what deal she could offer me and just her, her energy and like what she represented and who she was. She never. She didn't even like name drop. Like I've worked with this person and this person, so you should work with me. She didn't say none of that. Nice. She just laid it out factually. And as a businessman myself, I just read the situation and was like, "I want in. This looks awesome. I mean, only let me send a send a contract. Let me read it. Send it to my lawyer. You know, get everything signed off on signed off. And uh, I'm down. You know, so I I signed with her. SS Global. And we released Blueberry Pancakes as our first song together. Um, and so that's, and now I got this product out, you know. That's so sick. She, so she started off as my mentor. And the, yeah, you mentioned her name on the last podcast too. Oh, good. Good for yeah. me. I'm consistent, you know. No, for good. sure. Definitely. Yeah. No, yeah. I it's... really, really admire her a lot because she's like done a lot in the industry and on both sides. She started off as talent, you know, mm-hmm. as a model. So she kind of knows what like talent goes through. So when she's managing talent, she's like right there with you. Like, oh, on an emotional level, like, hey, I know what it's like. So I'm not going to treat you like cattle or like another number because I know what it's like in your head. Yeah. So she's very sensitive to that. And so that's not something you get a lot in the at the industry level. Yeah, you know, like for we, sure. Like we talked about before, there's the music, the music business, and then mm. there's the music industry. Yes, yes. So some people yes. are just making music. And some people ha- have actually set up a business. Some people have turned that business into profit that they linked up with somebody in the industry and someone in the industry reached down and said, come on. And now they're up in the industry. Mm. That's my situation with Tiffany was like, I-, I really did want someone, you know, at the industry level to work with. I didn't want to stay independent. I wanted to partner with somebody. Uh, I didn't know it was going to be distribution but the situation was just so right. And, you know, I just, the way she approached it and everything and the way it was laid out was like, I do want a distro deal. So I took it and, um, it's been great for me. I've, I've actually leveled up in a lot of ways. Sounds like it, bro. Like, I mean, that sounds like, like there was, you know, before that contract and then after that contract, like there, that was kind of like the, the beginning of a whole new chapter and everything. And now you, now now, now, that's how'd you get hooked up with the casting place through her? She acquired a casting agency Wow, because she's gangster. She's, she's, she's the woman, you know, she's, she's the one like, so she's just got a lot of, she, she knows a lot of people know who she is. Yeah. So, um, you know, she acquired the casting company. Um, and it became her database of actors. So it was nothing for her to say like, Hey, I, I know in your song, blueberry pancakes, you say, I might kick some more flows and then get into acting one foot in the streets, but no more ski masking. And people keep asking me, damn, Bren, what happened? I just pop my collar and I keep on rapping. If the beat keep knocking, I keep on rapping. That's Two funny. moon rocks, I'm moonwalking like Michael Jackson. And I don't do this often, opening up to y'all. I love the summertime, but I make money in the fall. <laughs> I love that shit, We used bro. to be some athletes, first team and all. So we had to find some new ways to ball. And that's on God. You know, I might kick some more flows and then get into acting. Mm-hmm. One foot in the streets, but no more ski masking. I mean, it's one foot in the weed game, but I ain't, I'm legit now. Yep. I love I'm that. I'm going <laughs> legit, baby. One foot in it, but I'm going legit. So I'll kick some more flows, get an acting 
it's clear that I wanted to do that eventually. Yeah. But I didn't have that planned for myself until like four or five years. I still think like I got four or five strong years of just focusing on rapping. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to switch to acting in like five years. And I have a lot of college credits towards acting. I've done a lot of things. That's sick, In the film industry on the low, you know, for like independent film festivals and stuff. So I have a background in it and I'm ready to do that in like five years. But she said, hey, you want to do this now? That's so fucking cool, bro. So instead of like creating my own reels, like, you know, video reels and submitting it to an agency and being like, hey, please sign me. She was just like, boom, you're already one of my artists. Why wouldn't I get you into some That's fucking dope, bro. I mean, your music is going to sell more. That's so (laughs) If you get in a commercial. That's a good point. We all win. Shared success. SS Global. That's the name of her company. You got to come from a place of abundance and that's the way it needs to be. That's fucking sick, bro. Yeah. Yeah, That's, uh, I'm so happy for you, dude. Congratulations, bro. bro. That's such a huge deal. Appreciate it. But yeah, to answer your question, I would love to get into acting sometime. Like it's like I took, I took like a, a theater class when I was in college. It was a fundamental of acting and we had to do monologues and be on stage and everything like that. And it was, it was a lot lot of fucking fun and i was like and i've and i've killed it in public speaking classes and everything it's always been something i've been interested in doing like i said it's a it's a so a goal of mine but by the end of this year i want to audition for at least one acting role don't, i don't care if i get it i just want to audition just audition yeah because it's something i've never done and i've mm-hmm. always thought about it I've, I've been told by you know lots of opinions that i've trust that i would be good at it and so it's also, and voice acting too is something I want to get into because I have a very, very distinct sounding voice. So there's certain avenues that I could probably do pretty well at. That's what's up, bro. Good job. Thank you. I appreciate you got, you got that. Vision. Oh, absolutely. Vision. Man. This is just the beginning. You know, the hippie speedball is just the beginning. You know, it's, it was also, it was kind of my way of, you know, for the longest time I was kind of just living in the shadows as like a gray man. And so the, the podcast was instead of like, jumping on social media and just starting to post a bunch and kind of get my, my name back out there or anything like that or name out there in general, because I was living my whole life like that, but I was off social media for so long that the podcast was kind of like my way to reintroduce myself because I don't really do well on like posting stuff and everything like that, but I do really well in conversation, mm. you know? And so yeah, it's like, yeah, the posting thing is a whole nother game. Yeah. Exactly. It's, 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 like it's a, a whole nother job. Exactly. It's a whole nother job and it's a completely different part of your brain. You need an assistant. Good brother. <laughs> I would love, that. I needed an assistant. Fuck. Oh dude, that sounds anybody, amazing. Anybody looking f- to get into the entertainment podcasting world. Let's work. You know, <laughs> let's work. I need that bad. And I, I, was, I, I don't, I don't want to like an assistant. Like you give me blow jobs under the table assistant. I want someone who can actually work you know for sure for sure you know the blow jobs that's e- that's easy. That's a given. You know, <laughs> right. I, forget I, I about want. It. Forget about it. Forget, <laughs> forget about it. Forget about it. I just need your fingers to work in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> handle the, handle the messages for me. Come on, you know, just yeah, for real, a real a real boss ass. I need a team so a, bad. You know, someone you know more like an executive assistant type is mm-hmm. what was what you is what you need, man. That's what I need. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna get that actually. That's going on my to-do list. There you go, buddy. Hey, Siri, add that to my to-do list. Did you get all that? Oh, shh. It's still an airport. find a to-do list. Do you want to create one? All right, whatever, ho. <laughs> you just hear, Pimp fuck you, smack. red boy. <laughs> Pimp smacks, <laughs> Siri. Oh, that's fucking great. Lame. Yeah. Yeah, dude, like that's that's something I really need. I need a I need a I need I need a team is what I need because I want to get to a point where all I'm focusing on is just hosting the podcast. Mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about the the mic. I don't have to worry about the camera. I don't have to worry about the fucking syncing, the editing. It's like I want to hire somebody to just fucking come here and run the camera and run the board mm-hmm. and then hire somebody just to sync it up and then send me the fucking finalized version. I'll watch it, make my edits and post the fucking thing. Like that's yeah. what I want to be able to do. Dream. That's the dream, right? Exactly. Right. And I, you I can would do it. It's oh, right around for the corner. Sure. Oh, it's, it's right around the corner, right around the corner, bro. Right around the corner. The, the, luckily the, the universe has been giving me such a crazy momentum with the podcast again. And, and, and also realizing recently because there, there, there was coming to a point where it didn't feel like, it, it it was it wasn't becoming as it wasn't as fun 
mm. for me because, and it only happens when I start to take the podcast and myself too seriously. Mm. That's whenever it all of a sudden things start to go down the shitter. So I finally, during this whole break, when I was recording these episodes and not releasing anything for a period of time, I was thinking in my head, I was like, I need to go back into the roots of why I started doing this in the first place mm -hmm. and stop caring about all that bullshit. Like, what was stop. the reason? I just wanted to drink coffee and smoke weed with dope people. Uh, that was it. That yeah. was it. And like, okay. So I, I, I had a friend recently while I was in Southern Oregon point this out to me. He said, like, he was talking about the blueberry pancakes, you know, and he was like, it was when I was still in trial mode, like with the, with the joints and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, like he had seen it go from that all the way to, to where it is now. And so he had some reviews on, the product and he had told me that he was like what was your goal your, what was your goal with this because i was like i was like man maybe i can make this blue or maybe next time i can do this or maybe put you know i was like already thinking of like other improvements i guess or mm -hmm. just like other like next level like where do i go from here you know and um he told me well your goal wasn't to make like the ultimate product off of try one your goal was to get your product on the shelves and you did it. Yeah. And so I was like, Oh, well maybe my goal should have been to make the crazy the best product ever, you know, and maybe I would have done that, you know? So it's like, if you'd say, Oh, I want to be the best rapper. Well, that's not saying I want to be the most successful rapper. Yeah. That's different. So it's, you might fuck around and liter point. literally become the best fucking rapper. You might, but then you have no audience because you didn't ask the universe to be the biggest rapper or you didn't include that in your vision. You just said the best or in, in our situation, you know, like we just started our podcast. I was the same way, uh, you know, or my radio show. I, it wasn't to make money. It was just to get on the air, man. I had vision. I wanted to get on the air, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, later in life, I'm like, okay, let me change the script now. Let me actually say, oh, my goal is to make the best blah, 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 blah. Or to like, my goal is to actually be the biggest blah, 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 blah. For sure. Or, you know, like be specific with it and then just say that. Oh, like the neuroreceptors thing we were talking about, you know, like you say that over and over and over again. You wake up and your peripheral nervous system is like, oh, this is our reality. You know, mm -hmm. we're making money off of podcasting. Yeah. You know, oh, how do I make And that is the fun? new goal for sure. That is yeah. definitely the new goal because, but like the, the, the thing is, is when I was telling you even beforehand, it's like, I need, I, I need some, like, you know, some sort of guidance and like structuring this. It's like, how do I even go about doing this? I've never met anybody that's done this before. Mm -hmm. And not really many of my podcasting friends are in this position to do this. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't really have a lot of frame of reference. So I'm trying to figure it out. Right. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, like we were saying earlier, whenever it comes to the difference between like, you know, like, um, social media posting and podcasting, they're two completely different muscles. And when it comes to doing something for passion and doing something for money, it becomes a completely different muscle. It works in the same body, but it's a completely different muscle that you're not used to working. So it's going to take some time to build it up and everything like that. And that's kind of what I'm figuring out because also it took me by surprise. Like I wasn't even expecting people to like the show. Mm. I just started it for myself just to have fun. And just to meet really fucking cool people to kind of reintroduce myself back into society. Yeah. And then the next thing I know, it's fucking doing really well. And then people are like, I love your show. And then they're playing at the dispensaries. And I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> and you know, I was you know like, it's an easy way to uh, kind of like still keep that purity of like, I don't do it for the money, man. I do it for the, the passion, you know, but still profit is like, I don't think. I make money off of my music necessarily. I think of, I put out music mm. and because of the following, I am able to sell products. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's so how I think of, that's my how my mindset's becoming about it where it's like, I, because you know that the, 
luckily when we were talking about this on the last uh, last podcast that like when you're doing something for passion versus doing something for money like you at least you have the passion to fall back on if you're just doing something for money and things start going bad you don't have that passion to fall back on mm -hmm. right and it's like and you know it's so you have to start thinking okay it's like i'm maintaining this but also while doing this but it's still kind of like i said like a new muscle that you have to kind of work right. and kind of learn exactly where it's at yep. you know and that's and by by what i was by taking this break and by you know kind of rethinking how i'm going to go about doing shit it was like it was the the it was the genuine nature that drew people in in the first place mm -hmm. instead of just trying to make money from it or anything like that or anything and i haven't really tried that hard about it but it became to a point where it was like i cared a little too much about the wrong things mm -hmm. and it started to sway from my ability to produce good content so then i had to rethink and i was like all right let's just go back to the drawing board and let's just fucking smoke weed and drink coffee with really dope people dope. and get the people that I enjoy really having on the podcast back on the show, yeah, getting yeah. new guests coming through and, you know, being able to fucking hang out with people and, and that stuff will start to curate again. Cause it's already starting to work. Like dope, it's, it's yeah. already starting to work. Cause I've had people reach out they're like, dude, it's so good to see you back. Like, you know, and some awesome. people like, and it's, that really meant a lot to me for sure. From someone that deals with a lot of mental health issues and deals with a lot of self-loathing and really low self-esteem, imposter syndrome, all of that shit to hear these sorts of things is definitely a big breath of fresh air. Oh man. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that for you, bro. Oh, great. thank you. I appreciate that, man. I really do. And it's, and it's and like, uh, but like I was telling you earlier, it's like, I'm a dad first. Mm -hmm. So I had to take care of all this other shit, yeah. but luckily it, it's weird because like the the podcast is a lot of work as we were talking about earlier it's a lot of fucking work especially when you're doing it by yourself and you're just kind of a one man circus act and you're pulling all these different fucking roles and it's but whenever i do a podcast like after we finish here today like i'm going to feel so fucking good for the rest of the day like oh. it's, it gives me a crazy adrenaline endorphin boost Love crazy endorphin that. boost it's cuz it's it's what i'm learning i'm crafted to do mm -hmm. and it's like and you 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 said something in the last podcast that has stuck with me ever since and i've quoted on the podcast numerous times actually is you said that i'm a social chameleon mm. he's like you can blend in with any sort of group of people and i was i that always stuck with me because i think that's why the universe made me that way was to prepare myself for something like this that's awesome. It's like, I'm going to make you a good conversationalist. You're not afraid to be on camera. You're not afraid to be on a microphone. You can talk to everybody. Boom. And now Boom. podcasting is huge. Go, go for it. If I wouldn't have started the show, I wouldn't have had all these amazing doors open and these ideas come and stuff like that. And that's another, that's another reason the show kind of gives me endorphins because I know it's going to take me. It's another one in the books. That's what I always do. Cause after I, after I do an episode, after the guest leaves, I go and I get a little bit more weed and I'll fucking roll myself a nice little personal blunt. And then I smoke that as a celebration. Dope, I'm like dope. another one in the books. I do that every go. single episode for this entire time. There's not been one episode I haven't done that for. And then that's what made also my house stink even more last time you came through. <laughs> that blunt I smoked afterwards didn't fucking help. Yeah. But that was a stinky fucking J, though. I guess it was yeah. rolled up in the keef and everything. Yeah. That was a good one. Still got my dube tube. Dope, dope. I use it all the fucking time. Love it's that. It's really good if I ever, like, you know, because I, I do Instacart for work now. And so I'm fucking in and out of the house all fucking day long. Mm. And so when I'm fucking sitting there smoking, if I have to go, I just put it out, throw it in that dube tube real quick, and it keeps it nice and fresh. Doesn't dry go. it out nice. and everything. It keeps all the moisture on the blunt, and it makes it so it burns really nicely. That's awesome, Forget man. Forget about it. I love it. It's fucking good shit. But yeah, man, I would love to fucking learn a little bit more about the acting. I would love, love, love to learn a little bit more about that. Yeah, I don't I don't know much about it. Um, As you learn more, you know, yeah. whatever you can guide and teach me, you know, like Word. I would I would appreciate it because I want to um, uh, I don't even know how I would even go about auditioning for an acting role. Like, I mean, I, I know that there's different like like a uh, casting call, like websites that you can go through, but I've mm -hmm. read that they're not worth it like and stuff so it's like yeah i'm not sure man yeah I, I, the, the independent i the independent acting thing i have no idea what the because i've seen a lot of those too and i'm not sure like if they're worth it or not either mm -hmm. but i just know my situation is so fucking happy for you is, bro it's spoon fed to me that's so. awesome though it's you like, deserve it though but you also you like it's like i said earlier you know the the these sorts of things are just a combination of hard work and opportunity mm. and if you wouldn't have put in that hard work that opportunity wouldn't have come about because if mm -hmm. you weren't willing to work so hard you know miss Gaines wouldn't fuck with you 
you know, <laughs> like she obviously isn't a person that wastes her time. Mm-hmm. So it's a combination of that opportunity and that hard work. And now, boom, and this is where it is. Yeah. And it's also something like you said earlier, it's something that you weren't even fucking ever intending. Like you want to do it eventually, but she's like, hey, let's do it now. And you're like, well, fuck. All right. Let's go. I guess. Like, yeah, exactly. Let's yeah. fucking go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking so cool, man. And I'm so happy for you. What Thank else you, you got man. in the works, man? You know, I'm uh, working with four different producers right now. I got Sean Baraman, the producer for Blueberry Pancakes, the song. Uh, me and him are working on some music that's like nice. really developing my solo sound as Bren Boy, the organ rapper. You know, when you say like, oh, if someone says like, oh, I'm an L.A. rapper, you're like, OK, I know what that means. Someone says I'm a Bay Area rapper. You already know the cadence and the, the way the dance goes. Someone says they're a New York drill rapper. You know what that is. Chicago. Mm-hmm. Okay, I know what that is. Atlanta. Oh, yeah, I know what that is. Someone says, oh, he's an organ rapper. People are like, huh. What does that sound like? You mean like acoustic <laughs> guitars and bonfires? Yeah, right. Like, what, what do you mean, organ? You mean like Elliot Smith or... <laughs> yeah, they're not, you know, what's that? What's that like, you know? So um, that's what this is about is like nobody's really capitalized on that sound. There's a lot of people from Oregon who rap but their sound sounds pretty similar to Chicago or to New York or to the Bay or to LA or to La, you know? Um, so that's how I feel about it. You know, is like, I got my own style. I love it though, man. And so me and Sean are, are really putting out, like we're really focusing on making an original sound. I can't tell you how we're going to do it. Cause I don't want anyone jacking my swag. Oh, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, Definitely. Don't but, share no secrets. Well, <laughs> we got some, we got something in the works. That's like really unique. And so you can feed them the food. You don't have to give them the recipe. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be exciting. And then uh, me and Swami are working on Kami Vibes 2 this next Saturday. We're uh, tracking the rest of the vocals for that. Fuck yeah, so bro. So that'll be out real, like in the next couple months. Um, and then uh, Jared Masters, a buddy that I grew up with in Southern Oregon. He's now a producer and an artist himself. Sick. He's, a cra- he's such a good producer. I don't even know what genre to put him in. Like, I can't say like, oh, he makes this kind of music. He's just different, man. There's like, there's no way to box him in. But That's that, awesome. That means he can make a lot of different styles. For sure. So what we did, what he did is he had a song called Mushroom Tea. And, it, and he put it out as a single, but he wanted to do a remix with a rap feature. And so he's like, hey, you want to rap on this? And I came through and like wrote to it. And I like gave him a voice message recording. Like, hey, what do you think about this? And I spit it for him. And he was like, oh, my gosh, let's do that. So I went in and recorded it. That's so sick. You know, I said, you only pulled her because you sold her on your cars and jewelry. I sip mushroom tea with a bitch and watch a Disney movie. That's what I'm here for, to open up some weird doors and explore my mental. Play with some instrumentals and colored pencils. What kind of music are you into? Vibes going up like crescendo. (laughs) Sip some more and play Nintendo. Baby girl, you should be mine. Turn your legs into a peace sign. Besides the point, we roll joints and ride the bass line. Slow one at the red light. I'm trying to see what that head like. I could shed light on certain situations you've been facing lately. I've been moving crazy, baby. I've been drinking. I've been thinking. Me and you together, we should get away for the weekend. Then write a love letter in the form of a poem and make you blueberry pancakes in the morn. Turn me on with this mushroom tea. Yeah nice bro b-boy style fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's know? fucking sick dude that's dope i oh, fucking man. send me the link for that i want to hear that yeah it's coming out soon so we got um you know jared masters produced it sean baramond is gonna mix it we got another person mastering it and uh we're gonna put it out as a single and i really have uh i got i got something special for that too you know so that's just one song with jared that i'm excited about um, and then I'm going down to California um, on the 20th to work with uh, the guitar player from Sleeping with Sirens. Oh, okay. Nice. Jesse Lawson. Hell yeah. So the guitar player, and he's the songwriter too. So um, he has three gold records of songs that he wrote, you know. Mm-hmm. So he got this kind of, this name for himself of making hits, but he- more heavy music, you know. Okay. So... But what people don't know is, yeah, he's like he he got the hits by making heavy music, but he studies top forty. 
Mm, he's like okay. an expert of that's the reason why he got those hits as because he knows the formula he for knows it. the formulas yeah a lot of people don't realize there's formulas they don't for realize that. there's formulas so it's not just the heavy style he knows the formula and so i he specifically wants to make something with me that's top 40 ish you know more Sick. pop vibes. Nice. something along like my song same thing mm-hmm. is so different like the pitch of the voice is just even different yeah i love her but i swear it ain't the same thing little mama slow down you're not my main thing say i'm different but to me there ain't a thing change every time she throw it back she holla gang gang yeah that sounds <sighs> like a fucking hit bro thing. <laughs> little mama slow down you're not my main thing you know it's pop pop yeah rap, you know? i was gonna say that sounds like a fucking yeah. hit for sure tell her i'm a player she still want to play with me Every time she fly to Oregon, always stay with me. And yeah, I stay licking that kitty, stay hitting. If you ain't really with the shit, then you ain't really living. In my life, I've been in love with three or four women. They always say the same thing. Brem boy, you different. They never say I'm tripping till they wonder why I'm missing. Cooking up romances, I've been busy in the kitchen. Used to wash them dishes, now I take a pack and flip it. Now I got a couch with a couple girls kissing. About to buy a house, yeah, somewhere on a river. I've been on a mission, play a play in my position. I'm in sunny southern Oregon, my side never switching. When I'm up in Portland, like the city, I rip it. Yeah, I could dig it, but me, I'm still the same. Don't hate the P, hate the game. Hey, baby, hey. Yeah, I love her, but I swear it ain't the same That's thing. That's sick, I'm bro. Slow, you know? Hell yeah. That, Pop rap. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. Chill, you know, like, versus the other MC shit that I do, you know? Yeah, well, well, it's it's good to have the balance of that, you know? It's good to be mm-hmm. able to be able to put out those hits and then take the rest of the record to do whatever the fuck you want on it. Facts. You know, that's like, that's the biggie formula. He said that a long time ago. He was like, you know, talking about that in an interview. He's like, you make the hits and then you do whatever the fuck you want on the rest of the album. Oh, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. That sounds fucking dope, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I'm excited to work with him. We got five days in the studio. I'm excited to come kick it with you in the studio. Oh, yeah, It's yeah. gonna be a fucking blast, dude. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man, going down there and uh, trying to make three songs with him. If one of them goes big, then I feel like we did a good job. Hell yeah. So he also just went platinum too, by the way. He got his fourth plaque and it's platinum. Damn, bro. Yeah. So (coughs) I fuck with his style of production and um, I'm real excited to get busy with him in the studio. and Fuck yeah, bro. See what kind of magic we make. So shout out to Jesse Lawson. That's definitely right. dude whenever it's all fucking keep me updated dude and of course you know you're welcome on the show any fucking time so anything you have fucking popping when you're ready for a press run you just fucking let me know brother. yeah bro yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because bring... we talked about that before yeah like man. anything that or even like these artists if you're like dude there's a fucking sick ass artist who's mm-hmm. got this coming out you should totally have them on the show send them my way yeah bro i'm sure jesse would be down to do your show you mm-hmm. know uh, swami down to do your show you know everybody that i mentioned today for um, sure that would be dope man yeah man and i'd I'm, love I'm to check out them. the music because i i like like i said i love hanging out with musicians you know yeah like a friend of uh, a friend of mine he was joking about it and he was like he's like you're he's like if you he's like if you keep on having these rappers you're gonna become like the no jumper of portland uh-huh. <laughs> and, and yeah. i'm just like it's like i'm cool with that you know it's like you know because eventually i would love to be on that podcast that's one of the ones that i'm really trying to shoot to be on someday i'm trying to dope. manifest that i would love i mean i feel like i would have a dope ass co- time with adam 22 that's and awesome. i want to be on impulsive one day like that's that's those are those are things that i'm trying to manifest right nice. now love that man oh for yes. sure well, i know it can happen i just gotta make i just gotta put in the work and then have the opportunity cross the way yep. you know yep. like we said gotta get that fucking that second row beachfront property ain't so bad so when that first yep. row opens yep. up you can slip right in there exactly you got it man and then you fucking you dropped it man <laughs> dropping knowledge bro sure. well, I fucking let the people know before they can find you before we sign off but yeah, you can find me in St. Louis with a gun playing all day <laughs> he's actually performing tonight at the fair fuck all day. I heard that yeah at yeah the fair yeah June's grandma is going at the fucking fair dude I want to go to the the Oregon County Fair, right? Oregon Sa- State Fair, oh, yeah, Salem. down in Salem. Yeah, yeah, that would have been cool to go. Right? Maybe I'll still go. What time is it? I have... Okay, well, you know, maybe. You know, yeah, maybe you can make Nelly it down tonight. there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's fucking so dope. <laughs> oh, I wish you know, yeah. I wish I could do that. Be like, well, we're going to go see Nelly tonight. It's like, that sounds fucking sick. Oh, yeah, the, the single, no kids life, you know? <laughs> well, not, yeah, that. <laughs> that like, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah that is that is definitely, I don't get me wrong, I love being a dad, but there's so many times where it's like, fuck, this would be so much easier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, this is, there's so many things, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. No, She's respect, amazing, bro. dude. You, yeah, love that I met kid. your lady. She's super cool. Met your kid, man. Hella cool. Like, 
you know, just good energy. You can you can tell you did a good job. Thanks, bud. Picking that, your that, tribe and ra- means, raising your people the right way. That means a lot to me, man. That definitely means a lot to me. Before me and my lady got together, I was a single dad for several years oh, wow. before we moved in together and everything. And like it was like I was just doing that shit all myself. So a lot of that is strictly because I fucking <laughs> I put in a lot of work with that kid, spent wow. a lot of time with her. Yeah, good for you. You know, man, and, respect. and the universe put it in the right way because the one of the reasons also I don't really have like a nine to five right now is because I don't have like reliable daycare. Mm. And so like I have to find ways to make money when I have her with me. Gotcha. And so, but also that means we're so fucking close. And she also knows now what it's like just to go out and get your own money. It's just like, okay, we That's want this. Saying. Let's go put in some work and let's go get that money. You in, know? Yeah, she's in school is in session, you know, riding with dad, making that guap. Forget about it. There you go. <laughs> Brand boy. This was a fucking blast. dude. Hey, Anytime yes. you ever want to come through, you're always welcome back. But awesome, man. I appreciate you, man. Everybody check me out at Bren boy, five Oh three. Everywhere like air, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Bren Boy, 503. And you know it. We're going to play a little Bren Boy on the way out. And thank you, everybody, for tuning into the Hippie Speedball Podcast. It is Joe, your host with the most Joe. And I will see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.